We've talked a lot about loudness normalization in the past, and let's just review really quickly the benefits of loudness normalization. First of all, if you're going to send your piece to broadcast, typically there are going to be some sort of loudness requirements. So that's one benefit of loudness normalization, but just a practical benefit if you're just uploading your video to the web or you know even just sharing it amongst your family members or whatever it may be, it's still helpful to do loudness normalization for a couple of different reasons. If your viewers will be viewing the material on a mobile device, those mobile devices don't have the best amplifiers for their headphones, so, and they typically don't have very great speakers either. So it's best if you can loudness normalize and get to a standard. Another benefit is that it makes your pieces consistent from piece to piece, so from episode to episode or whatever it may be. So there are a lot of benefits, and it just makes it easier for other people to consume your content, and so that's why we like to do it. Now, the great thing is, is that here in our Premiere Pro CC 2015.1 release. This was just released here in, I believe, early December 2015. Um, but anyone who is a Creative Cloud subscriber now has access to this, has a new feature that takes care of loudness normalization for you. And let me just show you what that does. So here, first of all, we have a piece that is just a very simple kind of intro clip with kind of a talking head here. We've got the intro bumper title and then we jump into an audio quality test. Just a very short piece here. What I would do to loudness normalize this is actually very straightforward. First of all, I would select my sequence, come up to File, Export, Media. Then when I come into the Export dialog here, um, we won't go into the details on what you want to set each of these two. We have other episodes that cover that. But if you come to the Effects tab here, scroll down to the very bottom, they hit it pretty nicely. We now have this loudness normalization section right here. You put a check in the checkbox, and then you get a couple of options. For those in Europe, you'll want to choose the EBU R128. United States and other parts of the world, ITUBS 1770-3. These are the different standards you can use. Now, we talked about this before, and I don't want to go into a lot of detail here, but typically when I have a stereo audio file, um, I'm going to want to target my loudness at minus 16 LUFS. Uh, for web consumption. If I'm going to broadcast, that's going to differ. So for Europe, it's going to be minus 23. For the United States, minus 24. There's this tolerance setting. I'll leave that at one loudness unit. And all that says is that it allows the export process to kind of have a margin of error of one loudness unit either way. So it could actually end up being minus 15 LUFS or minus 17 LUFS. So we're just giving it a little leeway there. That makes it a little smoother. And then we also get to set our max true peak level. So this is our true peak limiter. And I typically will set that at minus 1.5. Um, you can go to get in and kind of fine tune the true peak limiter. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it at its defaults. You can also have it write a loudness report and then tell it where you wanna put it. We'll skip that for now. But then I go ahead and export. Then I brought the audio over into Audition from that newly exported video file just to see what it looks like. And sure enough, when I have my audio file here and I come into the Amplitude Statistics tab, which if you don't have, come up to Window, Amplitude Statistics, and you'll get that. Whoops, I just unchecked it. We'll check it again. Go ahead and scan this file, and it will show us here, indeed, we are at minus 16.60 LUFS. So that is fantastic. It took care of that for us. It also set our true peak right around minus 1.5 dB true peak on both the left and the right channels. So I think we're good to go here. However, we have a little problem. And this is actually to highlight what the new loudness normalization feature does for you and what it doesn't do. Well, let me just play through a little bit of this so that you can hear it and identify the problem. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the Tascam DR701D field recorder. Now, here's a quick audio quality test. In this case, I'm recording with the Tascam DR701D. Did you notice there that the music is way louder than the dialogue? <laughs> and that's going to be a little bit of a problem for us. So what this loudness normalization feature does not do for us in Premiere is that it doesn't 
do the typical mixing that we're going to need to do. That is to say, if your dialogue clips are much quieter than your intro music, you're going to need to even that out yourself before you send it to export and use the loudness normalization feature. So here, for example, one thing I might do here, this is my intro music here. You can see I already have um, use the keyframes to duck underneath the dialogue for the intro part. And again, duck underneath the first dialogue after the title. What I can do here is I can actually, and you can see just looking at the waveforms here, let's expand these just a little bit so you can see a little closer. You can see the music is definitely more prominent. The amplitude is, is greater overall on this music track versus these dialogue tracks. So what that means is in this case, our music is too loud. If I just want to do a quick and dirty way to fix that, what I would do is highlight the music track here, have the playhead over the section I want to be able to mix, come to my audio clip mixer tab up in the upper left-hand corner, and I can just take this, this is audio track two, and I can actually just pull this back. Let's say, let's go minus eight dB. You can see that dropped the audio in this section here where we go to the title and it's playing at full volume. It actually pulled it down by eight dB. So now we're actually closer between those two. And let's export again using those same settings. So I come in here and my effects, again, we scroll down to the bottom of the effects tab. I have my loudness normalization checked. We're, I'm in the United States. We're going to use the ITU-BS 1770-3 loudness standard. Set my target uh, loudness to minus 16, tolerance to 1, true peak to minus 1.5, and we will go ahead and export that. Now, when I bring that into Audition, that newly exported file, look what happened here. The dialogue now looks to be much more prominent. Let's go to our amplitude statistics run a scan of that. Sure enough, our loudness down here is at minus 16.58 LUFS. So that's great. That's where we were targeting. And the true peak amplitude is minus 1.5 roughly. Let's see how it sounds now and see if the music is still competing with the dialogue. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the Tascam DR701D field recorder. Now here's a quick audio quality test. In this case, I'm recording with the Tascam DR701D. Okay, that's much better. So I did no processing on this dialogue audio prior to putting it into Premiere, and that's how it came out. So this is a great new feature that can save you quite a lot of time. So something definitely to look forward to and experiment with. Now, do I always do this? No. Am I always going to do this in Premiere? Not necessarily. I still may use Audition, and I still think that the round-tripping capabilities of Audition are great. They're very quick. Um, and if I really need to kind of fine tune, to be honest, lowering the volume on the, or pulling down the amplitude on the music like this is a little bit of a hacky solution and probably not ideal if I'm doing kind of a really uh, a high quality piece. I wouldn't want to do it that way necessarily. What I would probably do is bring the dialogue into Audition and actually process it there. But if you got a quick turnaround, that is a solution. And it's great that Adobe is putting these new tools into Premiere Pro for us. So hope that was helpful. Go ahead and leave any questions you have down below. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do that. We'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.